Welcome to the February 5th, 2024 advanced report for McGowan Group clients and NetworthRadio.com listeners. Is the Federal Reserve angry? It appears when people are happy, they get angry and then they raise the rates and they don't like market rallies apparently. Case in point here, this is October, so we've had three months of a pretty incredible rally in the Dow going from 32,000 to 38,600. So Jerome Powell issues the Fed statement, Federal Open Market Committee. This is on Wednesday at one o'clock and that statement comes out and as expected, they didn't lower the rates yet, but they didn't raise them. But at that time, the Dow was hitting a new record up to like 200 points. Powell takes the podium in, with, in a dire mood and basically takes the March rate cut off of the table because everybody was thinking there's going to be a March rate cut as part of what was getting built in here. And he doesn't like rallies. Why? Shiny, happy people, when their 401k goes up and their investments go up, they go buy stuff and that is a factor in inflation. It's called the wealth effect, by the way. I'm Spencer McGowan, your financial weatherman with your weekly global fast-paced tour of the financial markets. I'm president, McGowan Group Wealth Management, a team of 10 serving affluent families right from the Crescent in Dallas. Come on down, get your tour of the Texas Financial History Private Collection with original bonds and great stories on both bond investing and equity investing. All right, let's go to the next one here. So I wanted to give more detail. And so this is Dow year to date, right? There's the new high on Wednesday briefly. And then it got smacked down by 500 points because Jerome Powell said, no, you can't have your March rate cut because everybody appears too happy. And the Dow went from up 200 to about a minus 500. See, there's the all time high and boom. Well, it recovered back to 38,600 by the end of the week. So it, it really didn't dent it. Uh, the Dow's up uh, as of right now, it's like two and a third percent so far this year. Well, if you annualize that number, that's, that's a pretty big return, unlikely to continue. This surprised me. This is the yield on the 10 year treasury. Why is it important? Long treasury yields, the 10 year, they drive mortgage rates because the average duration of a mortgage is pretty close to the 10 year treasury. So if you take the 10 year treasury, you add 2% uh, or sometimes two and a half, uh, then you get what the mortgage rates are. That's the way the banks do it. Now here, this surprised me because Powell says no rate cut in March. You guys can't have that, even though you're thinking it'll happen and you're celebrating it and he doesn't like that. But the treasury yield dropped 3.8%. Uh, that means people bought treasuries, then it spiked back up. But it was surprising that the treasuries went the opposite direction as if they didn't believe him. I, I don't know. Now, here's another factor in not cutting the rates in March. This is good news. All right, so the Atlanta Fed, real GDP now, it comes out. They update it every week. They go all across the country, gather all the data, and then they say, based on what we're seeing, here's what the data says our current GDP growth rate is. So I called it up. Remember, the Fed said growth is only going to be 1.4% this year. Whoa, Fed might be angry at this. 4.2% GDP growth forecasted by the Atlanta Fed right here in the first quarter. Last quarter, it was twice as much as expected. It came in at 3%. This has been happening for two years. The learned economist, looming recession, uh, predictions of anemic growth, but the US economy still defying gravity. Earnings growth. Well, what we bring you when they're, when they're reporting earnings is we go back and say, okay, 230 out of 500 companies reporting. This number turned positive because of tech this week. Facebook Meta comes out, triples profit over last year and announces their first ever dividend. And boy, howdy, those that were short the stock got their faces ripped off on Friday because 
Meta Facebook skyrockets 20%. That was the superstar of the week. Uh, AI driven super microcomputer extended their gains with new highs all week. They're up 101% so far this year. And we'll see what the rest of the earnings are. Be sure to subscribe to YouTube McGowan Group and you'll get the fast breaking news, especially when there are market events and we want to reach our clients. This is built for our clients at McGowan Group Wealth Management. Thank you for tuning in and we'll be back next week with the best in financial news. Thank you for tuning in today to Net Worth Media. We also have Apple Podcast. Simply type in Net Worth Radio and boom, it'll hit your phone right then. If you also go to networthradio.com on a browser, you're going to be able to meet the team. You can see our performance track record, the model portfolios that go with today's broadcast. Also at networthradio.com, the longer play podcast is available there as well. We're grateful that you've tuned in. Remember, when we talk about a security, it doesn't make it a recommendation for your portfolio until we actually complete a written plan for you by Zoom or in office or simply a, a conference call. So you reach us at networthradio.com if you want to get that arranged. Market fluctuations and how to handle them. We build high cash flow portfolios and Past performance doesn't guarantee future results, so you do have to be ready for challenging markets. We can build more cash flow during challenging markets than we can when everybody's happy and everything's up, which is when we tend to raise tactical safety. Those allocation strategies are here at NetWorthRadio.com. Thank you for tuning in.